Uh, but for the time being, uh, let's close this and move on. Now, we have our executive block to keep track of what's going on. The next thing we need to do is to create our customers. Again, extend sim is pretty literal. Most of these names are not very imaginative, so if you want to know how to create something, there's a block here called create. So we'll copy that, paste it into our model. Let's double click on that so we can talk a little bit about what that guy does. And we see here uh, a, a collection of tabs. We're not going to worry about animation at this time, drawing pretty pictures and so on. Uh, but this is the create block. And we need to tell it when to create these items. You, you have two basic choices here. One is create items randomly. So if you're talking about a call center or a walk-in clinic or, or an emergency room, uh, jobs show up randomly. You can also create them by schedule. So if you have an appointment schedule that you want to list here, you can do that. Uh, for the simplest MM1Q, we're going to create the items randomly. And we're going to create them using a random distribution. Now this is a new feature of ExtendSim version 8, I believe. You can have one random distribution or multiple random distributions. I generally don't recommend that you use multiple distributions within a single create block. It's generally cleaner to assign one distribution to each block and just, just leave it at that. But there are cases where you may have patients coming in by appointment and you also have other patients coming in randomly so you have two different distributions that you want to track. We're just going to have one and again since we're assuming exponential inter-arrival times I'll assume that the, that the time between arrivals follows an exponential distribution. We may talk more about this later. You actually have a host of distributions you can choose from. Uh, exponential being the most commonly used Sometimes you want to use a log normal distribution, sometimes you want to use a uh, gamma distribution, which we'll talk about later. But for the moment, we'll stick with exponential. And here we have mean. The way this is written, this is the mean time between uh, the arrival of jobs. Okay? Uh, so let's make that 10 minutes. So, with this little example, we're going to have patients walk in on average once every 10 minutes. I'll give this a name. Uh, walk-ins. Now, we have customers coming into our environment. Maybe it's a clinic, maybe it's uh, what have you, nurse's station, whatever it is. So we have patients walking in. The next thing I want to do is when those patients walk in, they have to have some place to go. So I'm going to go over here to my item library. I'm going to page down until I see a queue. You can think of the queue as the waiting line or the waiting area. This is where jobs go if they can't go directly to the server. And let's double click on that guy. And there are a few things I want to point out here. First, uh, under, queue, under select queue behavior, we have two different types of queues that we can mimic in this particular block. Uh, one is a sorted queue, basically the waiting line. But the second one, which we'll use later, is called a resource pool queue. What a resource pool queue does is it holds items in the queue until a particular resource or set of resources become available. For this simple model, we're just going to use a sorted queue, and we're going to go with the default, which is first in, first out. Which, which you will see the vast majority of time in discrete event simulations. There are other options. Uh, the one that you may use later on is known as priority. If you have patients coming in according, according to an appointment system, you may want to give a higher priority to the patient that had the earlier appointment. So we may use that later on, but for now, we'll just stick with the first in, first out default. The next thing I want to click on is the results tab. Now we have no results because nothing has happened yet, but when you run your simulations you will want to look at your results. For example, uh, the length of the queue, the uh, average waiting time, number of jobs that arrive, number of departures, and so on. So let's just uh, give this a simple label. This would be our waiting line. And let's uh, move on from there. Now we have customers who can come in, 
they can stand in line. Uh, what are they standing in line for? Well, they're standing in line to get some sort of service. So I'll go back to my item library here, and I'll grab the box labeled activity, and we'll stick that in our model. And activities are very important in discrete event simulations. This is the actual work, the actual task being accomplished. Let's open that and highlight a couple of items there. First item I want to highlight is the fact that on the process tab, you can state two very important things. One, how many servers you have at that process. So in this case, we're just going to simulate one. But if I had five identical servers, I could just type in five here. I can type in whatever number I like. So we're, this is the MM1Q, so we're going to have one server, so we'll leave that at one. The second really important thing is the activity time. And again, you have the same collection of distributions if you select specified by a distribution. The same collection of distributions we had before, uh, including beta, gamma, exponential, normal, and so on. Again, we're going to go with an exponential distribution. And I'm going to have a mean processing time of, say, eight minutes. Okay. Uh, let's call this, uh, I don't know, worker. So each worker is going to deal with each patient or customer. The average processing time is going to be eight minutes, but it's not deterministic. It's going to be drawn from an exponential distribution. All right. Now, I want to do an additional uh, thing here. I don't want these items to just go through my system and have no idea of what's going on. I want to gather some information about them. So again, ExtendSim is not very imaginative in its names. There's a block here called information. So I'm going to stick an information block in this system. And let me open that guy up. And there are a few default pieces of information that this block always collects. The number of items that go through here is one. The time between items. So an item comes through, how long does it take until the next item comes through, and so on. And one that it, uh, is particularly important is cycle time. So we can calculate cycle time. Now, in order to calculate cycle times, we need to know the starting point of the clock. So this information block you can think of just as a block which, uh, or a clock which is recording uh, passage times. And in order to calculate cycle time, you have to have a start and a finish. So when the job goes through this block, we can think of as the finish. The question is, what's the start? So to calculate cycle time, I need to tell it uh, a timing attribute or a starting time for each item. So I click on that. Uh, right now, it says none because there are no attributes defined in this system. And then I will click on new value attribute. So I'm going to create an attribute. And let's call that attribute arrival time. And I'll click OK. Now, something has happened which is obvious. We, we've uh, created a block which will keep track of cycle times based on your arrival time. But we have not actually assigned an arrival time as an attribute of each job. So I need to back up a little bit. Let me go back to my create block. Let's open up uh, the submenu for that guy. And then I want to click on options. And you go down the list of options, you'll see a block here that reads timing attribute. I'm going to check that. And then I'm going to pick a, an attribute to use as the timing attribute, which is the one we've just created called arrival time. Now, what does this mean? This means that the create block is going to create the items. When the items are created, they're going to include an attribute called arrival time. If you go back now and you double click on the executive block, you will see that in addition to keeping track of all the times, the executive block is now keeping track of this new thing, this new attribute, which we've called arrival time. That time is being used in two separate blocks, one that create block, where the attribute is being created, and also in the information block, uh, where it's being used to calculate cycle times. So, I'm creating items. They can stand in line. They can get service. We can figure out what the cycle time is. And then at some point, they need to leave the system. So now we will grab an exit block. We'll add that here. 
so these jobs can actually get out of the system. So, believe it or not, we have almost created a full-fledged simulation here. Uh, there are two main items left to be done. One is we have to define the flow between the blocks and we're going to pretty literally connect the dots so we will leave the create block we'll go to the line we'll leave the line go to the worker we'll leave the worker we'll go through this information block we'll leave the information block and then we'll exit the system if you recall we said we would run this until the executive block counts that 15 jobs have gone through well how will it do that well, on the exit block, there's a little tab here showing how many jobs have gone through. It says zero right now. So we will connect that tab to the count tab on the executive block. And lo and behold, we have uh, created a simulation where jobs will be created. They'll work their way through the system. When 15 jobs get through the system, the simulation will stop. Now, let's see if this works. Let's literally see if it will work. So I'm going to click here to turn on animation. And I'm going to click this little tab here to run my simulation. And so we will see, in the form of these little green uh, circles here, uh, entities going through my system. When the counter here gets up to 15, it will stop. We're at 12, 13, 14, 15. OK, the system has stopped running. Now we can go back and we can look at the results. So let's do the, maybe the most obvious one. Let's just look at the information block. And let's see what's happened. 15 items have gone through, as we have instructed. The average time between items going through here is 13.4 minutes. The average cycle time turned out to be 36 minutes based on the arrival time. And we now have created a model jobs are created, they wait in line, get served, we calculate cycle times, they leave the system, and we've created a very simple model of an MM1Q. Next time, we'll get into more details about what these results mean uh, and how to get a little bit more insight out of them. So this is the conclusion of the introduction video for ExtendSim version 8.